Hello everyone, Panzu here. Welcome back to Belladonna. And we are in some kind of main hall. It's a grandfather clock up there. It's an old clock. Tick tock. Tick tock. Hmm. The gargoyles around. Those are a lot of gargoyles. Lupold, Brunhilde, Arthur, Maya, Lena, Ismaldor, Ether, and Yosef. In that order. Mm, so she remember all the names. The ones she gave them when she's still alive. Hey, uh, to the backyard over there. Living room. Mm, study. We have choices now. But before we go anywhere, let's look at this journal page. This letter is signed Belladonna. I've been waiting to hear the other side of the story. Oh, so a different perspective now. Belladonna's side of the story. If you had asked me just a few years ago about my future, I could never have phantom my life today would it be as it is. So strange I path has to twist a fate, set me upon that awake every morning, bewildered. And like a small child, I expect anything and everything to happen during each new day. The night my planned future snapped out of my joint and took a whole new direction was the night when my son Lucas died. I married Dr. Wolfram von Trauschloss in the spring, and we loved each other deeply back then. How young we were! He was an educated gentleman from the University of Ing Ingolstadt, and I had first assumed we would get a flight in Vienna. Instead, he convinced me we should live in my family's old castle and accept our roles as old-fashioned nobility to the little village down the hill. We moved into the castle with a staff of 30 servants, beginning the task of breaking life and joy into the majestic halls. At this time, I expect to live out my life as a lady of the household, minding the servants and, indeed, raising children. Before long, our first son was born, and shortly after that, he once again departed. I was devastated, of course, but Lucas had been sickly from his first day, and even though my husband had blocked out the possibility from his mind, I was not entirely surprised when it happened. Nonetheless, it changed us. I believe Wolfram blames me for what happened, and he thinks it was somehow my fault. He retreated into his laboratory in the old dungeon, and started doing unholy experiments and God knows what. Those were dark times. Instead of a household and a child to take care of, I now had no guest, practically no husband and no child. Everything I thought would occupy my time was gone, and all I could do was grief in solitude. The castle staff left one by one, until there were only a handful still here. My existence was meaningless, and I spent my days doing nothing. But I dealt with my grief in my own way. And in time, the claws of melancholy began loosening the grip on me. In so many ways, I have Clara to thank for that. So Clara is the name of the maid of the servant. The only servant left in the castle. Okay, where should we go next? Living room, study, or the backyard? You know what, let's look at the backyard first. Ooh, snowing outside. So, it's basically a graveyard. The backyard is a graveyard. Huh. There's so many tombstones. This must be the family cemetery. Yet, baby Lucas rests in an urn in the dining room. Why is that? So this family has tons of history. There's so many dead people in the family. So which one is the grave of Lucas? This one? A small grave. It says, Snowflake the pet cat. How cute. Oh, it's a pet. I suppose this one is Lucas's. The stone is so old and the name is worn off. Hmm. And there's coffin here. And another journal page. Okay, before we proceed further, let me go back and read the other page. <laughs> Let's go in sequence here. One more Belladonna letter. Hmm. Let's read about this Clara figure. The maid! Clara Stiber was one of the several chambermaids we hired when we moved into the castle shortly after the marriage. In the warm light of recent events, I feel as though I could pick her out of a crowd already at this time. But I suspect that the truth is that she was just another servant, one of many. And I didn't pay her close to the attention I now know she deserves. 
The time following the death of Lucas is hazy and ugly in my memory. I know I spent most of my time in an armchair in the living room, staring out the window. I know now that this must have been a difficult time for the staff as well. My apathy left them without purpose as more and more of the household was shut down. Soon the cooks and stable grooms began abandoning what they wisely identify as sinking ship. As more and more of the staff left the castle to seek employment elsewhere, there was less and less a reason for the rest to stay, and the household was quickly decimated. But throughout all of this, young Clara never left my side, and she gradually shouldered more and more of the household responsibilities, making it her task to take care of me and nurse me through my melancholy. It was her loyalty and industriousness. When everyone else left, that finally brought me back from my condition, and indeed, her love, whoa, as I now sit down to write it, has begun a long unbroken chain of happy days. Clara and I have the whole castle practically to ourselves, nothing to do but to enjoy our lives and each other. We sleep in a new room every night, cook our own food and have picnics under the tables or in front of the fireplace. We have no incentive whatsoever to uphold conventional norms when this house has become like a secure pocket inside the rest of reality. In truth, this touches on what I treasure most in Clara. Neither of us reap any concrete benefits from our union, neither financial or societal. There is no embedded purpose of producing heirs. Our relationship exists solely for itself, and is its own reward. Hmm, so the doctor was right. The maid and uh, Belladonna, they are indeed having a relationship. Wow. I am already adopting her adorable habit of naming inanimate objects, so that's why she named all the gargoyles. Huh. The castle is not quite ours, however. Wood frame still lurks like a ghoul downstairs, and occasionally emerges and spends a night up here with me. We have little in common anymore. In fact, he is like a completely new person. His mind is vacant, his stare distant. He is thinner than ever before and shivers with cold. Clara jokingly suggested we might have him declare mad and sent off to an institution, an innocent idea in her mind. But with some planning, this act might eventually prove to be our surest path to finally de reclaiming this old castle for us alone. Hmm, so the plot thickens now. Wow, this is a bit unexpected. <laughs> and they're indeed plotting on murdering the doctor. But as we all know, something terribly happened afterwards. And one of them, I don't know who, Belladonna or Clara the maid, now becomes a robot, a um, automaton, I should say. And the other one killed the doctor, in revenge perhaps. There was this bottle of milk. There's a bottle of milk out here. I wonder how long it's been here. At any rate, it's frozen completely solid. No wonder in this cold. Yeah, I got it. Frozen milk. Okay, now, there is an empty casket here. An open grave. The tombstone says Clara Steber. This must be the grave of the wonderful maid I've heard so much about. I can't help but notice that it's been emptied. Okay, so Clara is dead. This is her grave. And maybe I'm playing as her right now. I am the automaton. Clara the maid. The tombstone says Clara Steber. This must be the grave of the wonderful maid I've heard so much about. I can't help but notice that it's been emptied. Yes, it is emptied. Hmm. Okay, we have another page. Another journal page. A note. Great God, why did I not then expire? Why am I here to relate the destruction of the best hope and the purest creation of Earth? It was mere days ago at the peak of our bliss when Clara fell ill. She complained of headaches and tiredness, so I made a bed for her and laid her down to rest. For the next few days, I cared for my companion just as she had cared for me and nursed her with all my love and compassion. We believed it was just a passing sickness and that it would be over shortly. Each morning we thought she was getting better and each evening we realized she had actually gotten worse. And today when I entered her bedroom, she was there lifeless and inanimate. 
thrown across the bed, her head hanging down, and the pale and distorted features half covered by her hair. In horror, I beheld the body of Clara, my love, so lately living, so dear, so worthy. I rushed towards her and embraced her with ardor, but the deadly langua and coldness of the limbs told me that what I now held in my arms had ceased to be the Clara whom I had loved and cherished. Alas, what fool curse lies in my gentle touch? Uh, I mean, what foul curse lies in my gentle touch? I have lost my own child to the darkness, my husband to devouring madness, and now my lover has disparted this world as well. Is my love truly as poisonous as my ominous name, Belladonna? And so the doctor tried the poison on Clara, and it worked. Now she is dead. And I might be playing as her right now, playing as Clara, the automaton. Hmm, I see a shuffle there. Which I cannot take. Alright, so what's on this side? More Zeta, what is this? Uh, oh, it's a greenhouse. On top of the mountain. Hmm. Got a mausoleum on this side. What a marvelous mausoleum. The plaque says Francisca Canosa. I wonder who she was. Yeah, who is she? <laughs> Part of the family, perhaps. Well, it's gotta be. It's inside a family cemetery. Two statues of angels. It seems a bit paradoxical to create statues depicting something that's supposed to be immaterial. Let's call them Justifer and Phi. <laughs> Again, she's naming these inanimate objects. <laughs> it's a habit of hers. Alright, going to the greenhouse now. And we are in. Look at this place. This huge tree. It's a large tree. Looks very peaceful. Couldn't I have been reincarnated into one of those instead of being forced back into this mess? No, you can't. Someone wants you back. A tropa belladonna. Hmm. So the plant. Her name is named after the plant. <laughs> belladonna. This little plant has caused a lot of trouble. For a flower, it's not particularly beautiful, but for a murder weapon, it sure is. Yeah, it's a poisonous plant. Oh, and here's another note and another journal page, but let's go in sequence again. Let's go back and read this one on the table. More letters. Yep. Can someone tell me what happened to poor Clara? Some time has passed since the demise of Clara. As I calm down and regain control of my emotions, it occurs to me that there are some mysterious circumstances concerning her death. The sickness that came over her was swift and sudden indeed. Admittedly, my own medical knowledge is limited, but it still seems to me that such an instant and terminal change in the bodily humors should not occur naturally. Could it be that she somehow ingested something that made her sick? But what? And from that line of thought, it is not a far leap to ponder if she was murdered. It was long ago that I lost track of details of my husband's deranged research, but I do know he handles lethal substances and obscure chemicals. How easy it would have been for him to slip something into Clara's food. So then, why would he do such a thing? Did he know about our affair? We were very careful, but perchance he guessed it, despite our efforts. He would not go so far as murder based solely on a guess, would he? The distressing truth is, I no longer have any way of telling what Wolfram is capable of. It is vital important that these notes never reach any eyes but my own. These are grave accusations I am scribbling down, and in ways of proof, I do not even have anywhere to start looking. And yet, the possibility is there, gloating in its simplicity.